Joe Biden on the world stage this week at the G20 summit. You got the president, Chinese President Xi, coming face to face for a high stakes meeting. So do you think President Xi needed a cheat sheet? Our president did. He got caught with very specific instructions on how to act. That's flat out embarrassing to our country. Joining me now is Gordon Sundland, former U.S. ambassador to the European Union, high stakes era in which he worked, author of a brand new book, which is excellent. It's called Envoy, Mastering the Art of Diplomacy uh, with Trump and the World. First off, uh, Ambassador Gordon, congratulations on the book. Your thoughts about how the president did at the G20. Hi, Brian. How are you? Listen, I'm going to cut Biden some slack on the cheat sheet because Obama, Trump, Bush, everyone gets a cheat sheet. The real question you have to ask is what happens when you drop the cheat sheet and you're on your own? And I really worry that President Biden doesn't have a macro sense of what's going on, where he is, and what he needs to do, which, again, at the bottom, the bottom line of that is it really does signal weakness for the United States. And afterwards, you look, go to the readout and how the press in the China covered it, because they'll tell the truth. The press is the government. They show no acquiescence or backing off the hostile stance. We talked about progress being made. So what do you read into that? Well, I say this in the, in the book, The Envoy. You know, sometimes progress is defined as you got another meeting scheduled. The problem with diplomacy is the discussions seldom are really frank and they really don't get to the, to the core issues. There's too much ceremony, there's too much pomp, and there are too many people involved in the process. That is, I've got to say, that's the one thing President Trump tried to do was cut through the BS and get right to the point, and we need to do more of that. Some people get ticked off at that. It's almost you're bypassing people like you. When you go right to a leader, that ticks off the State Department, doesn't it? Oh, my gosh, it ticks them off to no end. Uh, when I first met with President Juncker, the president of the European Commission, they wanted me to take a huge delegation. Uh, they wanted to do a formal sit-down. And the first thing I did was I first called him by, his, by his, his first name. I said, John Claude. And he said, Gordon. And I said, thank you for seeing us. Would you be willing to spend a minute with me in your office before we have the fancy meeting? And he took me in his office, shut the door lit a camel, took off his shoes, and we never had the fancy meeting, but we really got to the point of what we needed to discuss. And hopefully it, the Biden group does a lot more of that than the fancy stuff. Because there's so much at stake. Also, uh, dealing with Ukraine. Man, you know that story inside and out. <laughs> President Zelensky's being held up uh, with great esteem. And I think justifiably, when we're seeing this conflict going on, what are your thoughts about how we, where we go from here if you still had the EU ambassador title? Well, Brian, how many leaders uh, like Zelensky would say, you know, essentially, I need bullets, not a ride out of here? A lot of leaders would Love be it. hightailing it out of the war zone and living off of their Swiss bank account. Zelensky, pardon my French, has big balls, and we should be supporting him all the way through. Uh, we got there a little late. We're doing okay. We need to end this war by making uh, Zelensky's, uh, you know, uh, a campaign decisive. And there is no equivocation. Ukraine is the doorstep to Europe. And it's only a short stop into NATO territory. And we right. need to end this before it drags on, without question. A couple of things. I just want you to say, I, I don't, uh, I want you to see this. I don't know if you could see from the monitor there, but President Xi, in front of the cameras, with a translator, confronted President Trudeau of Canada, essentially saying, you leaked our conversation to the press, but it seems like he wanted the world to see it. Watch. Everything we discuss is then leaked to the paper. That's not appropriate. And that's not how the way the conversation was conducted. If there is if there is sincerity on your part, free and open and frank dialogue, and that is what we will continue to have, we will continue to look to work constructively together. But there will be things we will disagree on, and we will have to come to Let's create the conditions first. So was that on purpose, Ambassador? And what do you take from that exchange? 
Well, she has a lot of chutzpah. I mean, that's calling the pot calling the kettle black. Uh, first of all, the Chinese do exactly what they want, when they want. They leak, they don't leak. And as far as I'm concerned, if Trudeau decided it was in Canada's best interest to leak some or all of that meeting, he had his strategic reasons, and I'm not going to second guess it. I would have told she to buzz off. Absolutely. And you need, this is what I get from your book, between, uh, between what you said and Trump's style, being just breaking the norms made progress. There's too much ceremony. We don't get enough done and the stakes are too high. Final thought. Well, the career State Department is all about the journey, not the destination. And one of the things I argue about in the envoy is we need more political appointees, not less, the way much of the media argues. Because the political appointees want to get the job done, get out of there, and go back to their real lives. The career people want to take a journey on the taxpayer dime. And you didn't. And I appreciate that. Very interesting. I, I found it fascinating to see someone's success in business transfer to success in, uh, uh, in diplomacy. Thanks so much. I, I'll pick up the envoy. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.